In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We read in the evening grazings of incense and Ashaya the gospel of <coughs> uh, our Lord Jesus Christ was in the boat and there was a strong wind and strong waves and the Lord was inside the ship but asleep and they wake him up saying don't you care that we are drowning and vanishing and then the Lord stood up and calmed the sea and calmed the wind and this is what happens usually externally this is what happened when we have tribulations from outside and this man today is about the tribulations from inside this man was possessed with demons demons controls him demons reigns over him reign over him and demons made him to be what mad not thinking on his own not only mad but mute can't speak and the blind can't see that was not organic disease that the demons were doing that to him and they can do this for any one of us who surrender to them let us see some of the examples Nebuchadnezzar you know Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar is a great king he looked at Babylon the great city and said isn't it the city that I have built by my own power and for my own glory when he said so the Lord said to him give him one year to repent and he didn't repent but then Satan struck him he made him like animals not thinking he took out of him his wisdom his mind and they kicked him out of the palace for seven years till what the Bible tells us he looked up to heaven when Nebuchadnezzar looked up to heaven his senses came back to him and he became wise again and he came back to his palace and became the king again Saul Saul Satan struck him with hatred to David and wanted to kill him and he was possessing him and David was playing the nigh to calm him down with the Psalms 
Herod, when he spoke, and people said, this is not a man, this is God, and he couldn't speak and say, no, it wasn't me, it was God who spoke. And because he couldn't say that and give glory to God, he was struck with worms who ate him alive and he did fall dead. Samson the great Nazarite man, he was very strong, got the grace of God in him, but temptation of the world in Delilah made him to forget his God. He was not seeing. He was not seeing that he left Jerusalem, the city of God, and lived for his own pleasure in Gaza. And in Gaza he found Lazza, for Gaza la Lazza. And that is why he left Jerusalem and stayed there <coughs> till Satan blinded him to the extent that they poked out his eyes and made him to work like an animal till he repented and God gave him a strength again and he struck against all of them and wrecked down the temple. The temple of idols. All these examples for how Satan can deceive us and can really make us not to see, not to talk, not to think. Solomon the Great, God gave him wisdom nobody else had. But as well, he lost it because he was led by other women out of the lust of the world. And that is, that is very fearing, very frightening to all of us. No one is immune. No one is immune. Great men Satan defeated them, but thank God that he gives us the chance of repentance and the chance to come back to him. Like Solomon the Great, he drifted away, but at the end he came back with greater grace and great power to write even the ecclesiastic book, which is of benefit for all of us. Anyway, they brought that man to the Lord. And once they brought him to the Lord, the Lord casted out the demons from him by a great authority and power. And immediately the man started to be wise, to think, 
to see the Lord and to confess him and to speak immediate how long a medical doctor would treat someone like that to be back to normal examination investigations take treatment for three months six months one year but for the Lord immediate healing no time in no time and that is why the Lord has come when the Pharisees saw the Lord have done so they started to wonder is he the son of David is he the Messiah and in spite of seeing what happened in spite of seeing that the Lord by authority and power have casted out the demons they said what he is doing that by Belazabal by Satan why do you think the Pharisees don't want to admit that he is a Messiah he is a Savior why why because they don't want to leave what they were doing this is the modern atheism modern atheism doesn't say there is no God no, God is there but God is doing this or that away from us we don't want to admit it we don't want to believe in him let God stay there and we are down Arfin uh, the existentialism of Mark yeah he was a Christian and his atheism started by when he was a smoking and his parents were rebuking him he didn't want to ke keep them rebuking him he stopped in front of them and he was a smoking behind their back and when one day they left home for a, a trip he relaxed at home and started to smoke and when he started to smoke he fell asleep and the cigarette fell on the rag and started to burn it he woke up and wanted to hide what he has done he went into the bathroom to burn the rag and felt that God is looking at him and he looked at God and said I can't burn it because you are looking at me don't look at me please and when he said please Lord don't look at me he felt comfortable to burn the rag and he burned it and he came with his theory our father who art in heaven stay there let your name be glorified among your angels but don't interfere in my life don't 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 look at me because when you look at me I am embarrassed I am ashamed don't please and the Pharisees are in the same way they don't want the Lord to save them because they want to carry on with their own sins 
do you really see the Lord and you open your heart for him to repent and change your life or do you stand before the Lord seeing the Lord doing miracles in front of you in the life of others and you are away from him you don't want him to interfere in your life to save you to purify you to change your life this is the message today the Lord answered the Pharisees and said to them how come that I cast out demons by Belizebul if any city is divided against each other it will not stand and that is why if the kingdom of Satan is divided he would not stand demons cannot do evil and good at the same time you don't expect from the devil except evil look at the fruits look at what I am doing and what Satan is doing it cannot be and then he said even if I cast out demons by Belazabul aren't you children the disciples casting out demons too I give author them authority to do so so by what power they are casting out demons is it by Belazabul too they couldn't say that because they couldn't say that about their own children and then the Lord carried on and said to them I will tell you another thing if there is a strong man has got hostages in his house has got his household has anybody can take this household out of him and steal this house from that strong man unless he is stronger than him Taban in this parable it's clear who is the strong man Belazabur <coughs> And what is his house? The whole earth. And what is his household? Us. Because Satan has taken in hates every single man died before Christ. They were in his house. They were in his under his reign till the one who is stronger than him who is stronger than him the Lord who came and confiscated his house he opened the gates of hates and got everyone out and the same Christ is for every one of us to free us from the authority of Satan and that is why he is saying to them I cannot do that I cannot save this blind mute and demon possessed man unless I am stronger than Satan unless that Satan can't stand before me and then look at 
what he said after that. He said, whoever is not with me, he is against me. Whoever is not with me, he is against me. The Lord wanted to say to them, is Satan with me? Is Satan doing all this goodness? He is not with me. So he is against me. As simple as that. And the last thing, look at the fruits. Would the good tree give good fruits or bad fruits? And the bad tree would give good fruits or bad fruits? You see, you judge the people or you judge the <coughs> person with the fruits. Am I doing evil or good? Am I saving these sick people and healing them? Or actually the reason for their sickness? Satan was the reason of that man to be possessed, blind, mute, living in the tombs, under no control. The Bible tells us they were chaining him and uh, he was breaking the chains. Satan was the reason for that. But I am the reason for what? For his healing. For his coming back to his senses, to his mind, to speak and to see who is good, who is evil. And then the last, the last thing he said, whoever blaspheme against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven for him. But whoever blasphemes against the Spirit of God, it will not be forgiven, neither here nor in heaven. What is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit? The Lord wanted to say to the Pharisees, you have seen the Son of Man, you have seen the Son of God, and you have seen me doing miracles, and yet you don't believe. This is resisting the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is opening your eyes to see me saving you and helping you curing you, glorified in your life, and yet you don't want to believe. Resisting the Holy Spirit continuously like that is a blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. What is it in our life then? That was about the Pharisees. In our lives, in our lives, if we see the Lord being glorified in our lives and seeing the Lord working day and night, keeping us alive, giving us what we need, supporting us and helping us in every way, at least leaving us alive, at least giving us age and time on earth. And then we don't want to listen to him. 
and we don't want to repent and we don't want to change our lives and leave him to change us then we are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit if we stay resisting the Holy Spirit if we stay quenching the Holy Spirit if we stay grieving the Holy Spirit till we leave this world then it is a blaspheming against the Holy Spirit and it would not be forgiven for us I hope, I hope, I hope that we all we all when we see the Lord is glorified to glorify him and to ask him to be glorified in our lives to change us and to make us like this man wise again seeing again talking in his with his glory and to glorify him and praise him again may the Lord give us all this healing of our spirits and our lives glory to God forever